Hello, and welcome to another episode of China Record. The U.S. lawmakers are now on their way to impose new sanctions on China's tech companies, with a particular focus on China's chip maker. It seems like the USA is responding to China's progress in chip making with an old-school approach. The new proposal of sanctions certainly comes after Huawei, and SMC made a breakthrough in their release of the new Huawei phone. Everyone was surprised by the new Huawei phone, and their surprise was accompanied by a question mark. And now, the US is preparing to impose these new sanctions. However, it seems like it might be too late to stop China's chip making. SMC, China's top chip maker, has achieved significant technological advancements despite previous US sanctions. It will be interesting to see how this situation unfolds. Ten Republican lawmakers are urging the Commerce Department to impose heavier sanctions on China's Huawei Technologies and Semiconductor Manufacturing International Corporation (SMC). After the two companies displayed a domestically manufactured advanced smartphone chip, circumventing U.S. export controls. House Foreign Affairs Committee Chairman Michael McCall, Republican Texas, and nine other lawmakers signed the letter dated Thursday last week, which suggested seven measures to tighten sanctions against China's chip industry and punish Huawei and SMC for allegedly violating U.S. export controls. According to the Washington Post, the letter was addressed to Alan Estevez, Under Secretary of Commerce for Industry and Security. Earlier this month, Huawei unveiled a smartphone running an advanced processor made by SMC, timed to Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo's visit to Beijing. The phone launch made waves in U.S. policy circles, as a clear sign that a four-year campaign in Washington had failed to prevent China's state-supported tech champions from making the jump to the 5G era of chips. Huawei's new phone, the Mate 60 Pro, sent lawmakers scurrying to try to understand if SMC had violated U.S. sanctions to make the chip. According to the Washington Post, the lawmakers' letter enumerates how the Commerce Department could wield arcane export controls law to make it harder for China's chip makers going forward. It called on the Commerce Department to set up a China-facing sanctions authority under the International Emergency Economic Powers Act, which could impose full blocking sanctions on Huawei and SMC. It also called for all existing export licenses to Huawei and SMC to be revoked, and for criminal charges to be pursued against the company's executives. The U.S. has imposed sanctions on China's chip industry by requiring suppliers to get an export license to sell certain equipment to China's biggest chipmaker SMC-1. The U.S. aims to curb China's technological advancement and protect its own national security interests 12. Here are those U.S. sanctions on China's chip industry major event timeline. In September 2020, the U.S. Commerce Department announced new export restrictions on China's largest chipmaker, Semiconductor Manufacturing International Corporation SMSC, citing national security concerns. This meant that any U.S. company that wanted to sell equipment or software to SMSC had to apply for a license first. In December 2020, the U.S. added SMSC and dozens of other Chinese companies to its entity list, which effectively banned them from accessing U.S. technology and components without special permission. The U.S. accused SMSC of having ties to the Chinese military and posing an unacceptable risk of diversion to military end use. In January 2021, the U.S. imposed sanctions on another Chinese chipmaker, Yangtze Memory Technologies Company (YMBC), which was developing advanced 3D NAND flash memory chips. The U.S. alleged that YMBC was also involved in military activities and human rights abuses in China's Xinjiang region. In March 2021, the U.S. tightened its export controls on seven Chinese supercomputing entities, including the National Supercomputing Center in Wuxi, which operates the Sunway Taiho Light, one of the world's fastest supercomputers. The U.S. claimed that these entities were supporting China's military modernization and weapons of mass destruction programs. In May 2021, the U.S. Senate passed a bipartisan bill that aimed to boost U.S. competitiveness and in innovation in science and technology, especially in the fields of artificial intelligence, quantum computing, and semiconductors. The bill authorized $52 billion in funding for research and development, manufacturing, and incentives for domestic chip production. In July 2021, the U.S. Commerce Department added six more Chinese entities to its entity list, 
including Tianjin Fidium Information Technology Company, a leading developer of high-performance processors. The U.S. accused these entities of using U.S. technology to support China's military civil fusion efforts and destabilizing military modernization. It's not the first time that the U.S., the EU, Japan, and Australia have announced a coordinated effort to restrict the export of advanced semiconductor equipment and materials to China, citing national security and human rights concerns. The move is aimed at slowing down China's ambitious plan to become a global leader in chip production and innovation, especially in areas like 5G, artificial intelligence, and quantum computing. But here's the thing. These sanctions are too little, too late. China has been preparing for this scenario for years and has invested billions of dollars in building its own domestic chip industry. It has also diversified its supply chains and forged partnerships with other countries that are willing to cooperate with it. Even though with the sanctions, China still accesses West Chip Making Machine. On August 31st, ASML said that the company owned licenses to ship restricted chip making machines to China until the end of the year, despite the new export restrictions coming into effect in September. Industry observers have therefore speculated that ASML had already applied for export licenses in advance. China can import critical ASML tools until 2024 under New Netherlands rules that restrict access. The rules require ASML to apply for a license for each export of its dual-use products, which can have both civilian and military applications. However, the licenses are valid for four years, meaning that ASML can still ship its existing orders to China until then. China can buy older tools that do not fall under US-led restrictions that the Dutch government said it would adopt in March 2023. These tools use deep ultraviolet DUV, lithography, which is less advanced than extreme ultraviolet EUV, lithography. ASML said that China's sales would increase as Chinese chip makers rush to buy these DUV tools. China can rely on ASML service and maintenance for its existing chip making machines until the end of 2023. The Dutch government has imposed tighter restrictions on servicing chip gear in China, but ASML has a grace period of four months starting from September 2023 to fulfill its contractual obligations with Chinese customers. So what does this mean for the rest of us? Well, it means that we are losing our competitive edge in one of the most important and strategic sectors of the future. It means that we are giving up our influence and leverage over a rising superpower that has different values and interests than ours. And it means that we are missing out on the opportunities and benefits that come from collaborating and innovating with a huge and dynamic market. That's why I think these sanctions are not only ineffective, but also counterproductive. They will only push China to accelerate its chip development and become more self-reliant. They will also damage the global semiconductor ecosystem and hurt the businesses and consumers that rely on it. And they will create more distrust and hostility between the world's two largest economies which could lead to more conflicts and instability. Even without the Western chip-making machines, China has managed to produce advanced chips such as 7 nanometer ones. These chips are currently being used to power Huawei's new phone. According to reports, China's SMSE has been shipping 7 nanometer chips since July 2021. These chips are based on a close copy of TSMC's 7 nanometer process technology. Huawei's latest flagship smartphone, the Mate 60 Pro, uses the Kirin 9000's SoC produced by SMIC using its second-gen 7 nanometer class process technology. This is a remarkable achievement for China's semiconductor industry, which has been striving to become more independent and self-reliant. However, it's worth noting that some analysts point out that SMIC 7 nanometer process is still behind the leading-edge technology of TSMC, Intel, and Samsung, which have developed more sophisticated and efficient nodes. Instead of trying to contain China's chip industry, we should try to engage with it. We should recognize that China is a legitimate player in the global chip market and respect its right to pursue its own technological goals. We should also seek to find common ground in areas of cooperation, such as addressing the environmental and ethical challenges of chip production and use. And we should foster a healthy and fair competition that drives innovation and benefits everyone.